Hi everyone, and welcome to our channel and to our new series of lessons entitled 3D Models for Newbies. Over the next several weeks, we'll be looking at the tools you can use to create components so you can make your own custom 3D models. Part of what you'll need to know how to do to begin with is first, how to set up a job in Aspire, know how to be able to draw vectors, closed vectors to be specific. If you need some help learning how to draw vectors, I've included a link to the Vectric tutorial that could help you out in that area. Throughout the lessons, we'll take a look at some of the 3D clip art that comes with the software. We'll take them apart and analyze them and see which tools were used to create them. This way, you'll know how to make your own if you want to. This is the very first lesson of several, so it's going to be the very basic information, but it's essential to understand how it all works together. In this first lesson, we'll learn how to create basic 3D components. We'll learn how to adjust the shape height and the base height. So let's get started. We're going to create a new project within the Aspire software, a single sided, 12 inches by 12 inches is my choice, material surface for the Z0, and I'm going to place my XY in the center just for this job but my modeling resolution is set to very high. I'm going to start to draw some closed vectors as an example to show what can be done. A circle, a rectangle, and a triangle. You're invited to play along if you'd like. So here we are with our closed vectors. I click on my 3D view so I can see the end results of my decisions. And I'm going to select the circle first. We're going to deal with only three of the shape options within the Create Shape window. The dome is the first one we'll look at. And you can see the end result of the circle being converted into a component. You can adjust the shape height by sliding the bar up and down, positive or negative, or by inputting a very specific number. You could also adjust the base height, again, by moving the slider. The difference between shape height and base height is important to understand. The shape height is as if you're pulling the shape from the top, increasing its Z height. The base height is different. It's as if you're lifting the entire component straight up, and you can see the straight sides that were created. The next shape we look at is the pyramid shape, or the cone. Same circle, different option, different end results. And our last choice is what I call the plate, or just a flat component. All you do is adjust the base height to the thickness you need. So that's it for the circle. Let's look at the results if we choose the rectangle. Same dome option for component. Adjust the shape height if needed or adjust the base height if needed. There are a few other options within the Create Shape for the profiles, but we'll get to those in a later episode. Next, we'll try the cone shape with our rectangle vector. It creates somewhat of a pyramid, having the option to adjust its shape height or its base height. It starts to open up endless possibilities for your components. And of course, the flat plate is simply that, a rectangular plate. A 
if you want to create now a new component, simply click on the Start New Component button and choose your new vector. Again, choose your shape. This time we'll go back to our dome shape for our triangle, adjusting the shape height as needed and the base height. Within this window, there are also other options for the final height of your component. Again, we'll go through those in a later session. For now, we'll just choose the No Limit option. There's also an important option to choose from at this point, is the component properties. We'll get to that in a minute. And of course, naming your component is important. It keeps you from getting confused later down the road. Once you're done and you close your window, you can see in the component tree how the components have been listed or arranged. The circle, which was the first one, is at the bottom, and then every other component is stacked on top of it. When dealing with components, their property and how they interact with one another becomes important. If they're not touching one another, it really doesn't matter. But if they are overlapping one another, how they interact is critical. We're going to look at four of the options for component properties. The first one is called Add. Its symbol is an upside down U. You can see in the picture how the rectangle has been added to the dome where it overlaps. The dome is our first component in our component tree, and the rectangle or square is the second one. And as the sentence says, the square has been added to the dome by whatever thickness that square is. Our second option in dealing with component properties is subtract. And as the name implies, it will reduce the area of where they overlap by the thickness of that component. The symbol for subtract is a U-shape. Our third option is entitled Merge. This is where you have two components interacting with one another, but not really. You can see in this picture where they overlap, the dome has not been disturbed, but there is a slight green shadow. This is the software's way of telling you that there's something there, but they're not interacting with one another. The symbol for Merge is an upside down U that's been filled in with yellow. And the last property we're going to look at is Subtract Low. This is where the software will push down the overlapping area to equal the thickness of the second component. And the symbol for Subtract Low is a U-shape filled in with the color yellow. So let's look at a real-world example. I'm going to create two rectangles that overlap. Choosing the first rectangle, I'm going to click on the Modeling tab and our first icon at the top left, which is Create Shape. And to keep it simple, I'm just going to choose the Plate option and create a base height of a half inch. And of course, I'll name it Square 1. And then I'm going to select my second vector and create another shape, but this time it's only going to be a quarter of an inch. I'm going to keep the component property at Add, and when you close the window and take a look at it in the 3D view, 
and you can see where they overlap, they are added together. Half inch for the first component, a quarter inch for the second component. But where they're added together, the total thickness there is three quarters of an inch. We can right click on the component in the component tree and choose to change its property. Here I've changed it to subtract and you can see the end result. I can choose that second component again from the tree, right click on it and choose the component property to merge. They don't interact with one another. And there's that small green shadow that you can see in the 3D view. And again, right click, choose subtract low and everything has been pushed down to the level of the first component where they overlap. If you choose a component and click on the small wrench for the component properties, you could also change the, the properties at the very top. Add, subtract, merge, and subtract low. One other detail about changing component properties. You can select your component within your 3D view, click on it one more time, and there will be a small blue box at the very bottom. If you click on that blue box, you can then simply adjust the component properties within your 3D view. It's very interactive, very useful. You can also adjust the shape height from here, the base height. We'll get to the fade and tilt in the next lesson. I hope this made a lot of sense to you and gave you a little bit more insight and understanding of how components are created. As I've said earlier, these are going to be short lessons, about 20 minutes. I don't want you to get too bored, but I want to give you things to try and practice with. Our next lesson is going to be dealing with tilt and fade and some real-world examples. If you're interested in seeing more, subscribe and make sure you click on the little bell to get a reminder. If you need some help, send me an email, mm at See you next time. Enjoy.